Hello guys, how are you? This is the build of the 172nd Fieseler Stoich. Um, a very small build. I, I wanted something to clear my mind lately. Uh, well, my hands shake a lot. I don't know why. Mainly my right hand. And I wanted something to just test um, the muscles of my hand just to try to have a steady hand with the airbrush, with a brush, you know. It was a simple build. It was supposed to be a simple build, and it was, but uh, as you know, Fiesler Storch has some metal structures, and I just thought, why not change this by metal and that by metal? And I didn't change it all, but I finished this kit with a few metal changes made by myself. Uh, not Formula One stuff, as I used to say, but I enjoyed this thoroughly. And I also painted uh, desert style, because um, we all know this plane is associated with the great General Rommel, right? So I hope you guys enjoy this um, this video. Um, and let's do this. Let's do this. Let's start by cut the pieces, by cleaning it, and uh, usual stuff. Building the Fiesler Stoich. And we're starting on the usual place, as you know, cockpit and its assemblies. Uh, very straightforward, just try to do some light effects on it, paint it color based, primed it, paint it, and then give it a bit of highlights. This kit is not a difficult kit, however, it is a bit fiddly, so be sure to cut your excess styrene very, very well, sand it all and to polish it very well and to, as much as you can, just dry fit it. If you have one single doubt about something and it involves two pieces, fit one to the other without glue, dry fit it to see if it really fits because it will, will really help you in a future build. Well, I thought the cockpit was a bit too, um, too empty. And at least I would put some seat belts on the cockpit and improve a bit the instrument panel. I started to do um, masking tape seat belts, but then I went to my photo edge box and I noticed that I had two photo edge sets already used. Um, and on one, I had one seat belt and on the other, I had another seat belt and they were for for German uh, for two ME 109s 172nd that I had so I thought why not use one seat belt from one and the other seat belt from the two they are of the same type and the instrument panel the the main the central instrument panel it was um, from <laughs> 
a um, a mosquito 172nd. I they were the same exact same size, the central console, and so I thought, why not? So I removed all the engraved details of the instrument panel and placed the um, the photo wedge set, and like that, I truly believe it improved the, the cockpit just a bit. I'm painting the cockpit with, with uh, RLM02. Uh, which is a kind of a green tone uh, here. It's the light. I have a 6K light. I don't know if the definition of the lights are this 6K. It's a bit more um, realistic light. And it looks like a open green, but it's R RLM02. Mr. Dissolved Putty for uh, covering seam lines. It is fantastic. I used, I used first uh, sometimes just Mr. Surfacer 500, but well, it's a gap. It goes and floods into the interior of the crevasse of the gap. So Mr. Dissolved Putty helps a lot. to be very careful when sanding because you have to remove the seam line but you don't want to remove the bottom side detail of the cloth and the fuselage of the fuselage stash. Panel lines were too shallow, just too shallow, and with all the paint work that I was um, see coming, I thought it was better to rescribe some panels. In the middle, uh, the Stoich probably had some uh, cloth. Um, it was not only fuselage. Uh, it is a very common thing on observation uh, planes and stall short takeoff and landing vehicles, and this one was one of them, of it. Um, so on that panel uh, uh, cloth part, I let it on the middle of the wing, I didn't touch it, but on the physical metal parts, I just added a bit of depth to the um, lines and to the paneling. I am using Revell glue contacta to glue the wings. I love contacta as a fantastic glue, but if you notice this, I am not putting the glue just on the edge of the wing. I'm putting it a bit inside the wing. Why? Because when I use, I fit both halves, the paint, the, the, the glue is going to ooze out. And when it oozes out, that's not good. So you want it the less amount possible that oozes out. 
uh, maybe a bit it's also good for sanding and to cover some seam lines when you sand it of course but don't do that and um, that enhances the ability for you when doing this with your fingers to enhance your uh, kit with fingerprint technology and on this kind of technology you don't want your fingerprint embedded been there done that Here I just assembled the engine. Um, to be honest, it was just to show you guys, because this engine is only to be put on the Moran Sonnier, which is a version, French version of the Fiesler Starch. So it's just, I was just having fun. I still have the, the engine here assembled. Well, I didn't use it, because on the desert version, as you, as you know, it's the classic Fiesler Starch it's protected so by fuselage so no need of that but I, even so I, I built it is a bit rough why not change it uh, to, to metal so I cut two needles uh, a bit of um, on scale and I used those to uh, substitute these um, plastic pieces to be honest I did that quite a frank quite some times so on, on, on the rest of the, the the metal frame not all um, I couldn't film it all because it, it is fiddly it the pieces itself are fiddly as you are going to see more ahead but um, to film it with the camera on front even on my side it was a bit complicated I didn't change it everything I was just having fun this is not I, I don't build and I'm sorry to say this I don't build to impress you guys I just build to have fun and I like to model and to edit video. These are two hobbies of mine, so I used to say that I have the best of two worlds. Um, but I did it with a lot of um, will to share with you guys, so I didn't change it all, but some pieces are indeed the metal. So this is what I did. I changed um, some frames from plastic to metal. parts oh my god these clear parts these clear parts oh my god uh, <laughs> yeah guys they were not bad uh, just 
um, not good. I mean, you have to fit this very, very carefully. Very careful indeed. This canopy, oh my God, it was uh, really fiddly. Um, my only advice to you is use um, clear glue, uh, white glue, PVA glue, whatever you use to, 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 to bond um, clear parts. And please make sure it is on the right spot. Test it with another piece, for instance, that's going to fit on that one without gluing it, just to use it as a reference point. Remove it, remove the part that it's not yet placed and let that part dry until it's stone. Okay, or at least until it's quite um, adherent to the, to the fuselage. Do the next part on the same process. Always make sure that the roof, that the roof of the canopy is going to fit. And above all, the front, the two front glasses, front uh, windows, make sure that everything fits very well. Um, even so, there were two or three gaps which I uh, covered with white glue, PVA glue and water. Uh, I made a very thick paste of it. I didn't use the 50-50 uh, ratio that we use sometimes. And I, with, a, with a, a needle or with a toothpick, I just went on top of it. Wait until that white substance just filled the gap and let it be. And that way you have, you are sure that the, the, the canopy is all covered, even because when you are going to airbrush the, um, the plane, you are you have plenty of sure that there's no particles of paint that's going to go inside the canopy. And as you can imagine, one or two or three particles of paint inside, it's, it's a nightmare. You can see that for miles, okay? So be careful with that. Also, uh, as usual, mask on the outside, but also on the inside. If you have to do this on every clear part, on this is imperative. Because this one has a big canopy. You are going to be able to look inside. Even if you don't see any detail, you are going to see the other side of the canopy. And if you don't paint it in the, color, the interior color, that gray-green that I told you first, it will look artificial. So paint it on the inside, on the cockpit color, on the inside, on the outside, on the color that you want of the fuselage paint camo scheme. And of course, paint it Please paint first the interior on that gray-green color, okay? Apply and assemble the cockpit on the fuselage, on the kit, on the plane. And let the, the masking tape on the outside be there to protect from the outside painting, okay? If you forgot, if you forget to remove the masking, the kanuki, uh, kabuki tape uh, on the inside, that will be very unpleasant. It will be uh, a plane with some curtains.
let's take care of the metal structure under the wing um, a bit fiddly also uh, I had to use I had to use some visual uh, pictures visual aid because sometimes the instructions are not very clear okay and this is just some contraption I just got out of my mind just to help because I was not clever enough and I placed the antenna on top and then I thought I couldn't get it but then I found out I just blew it so <laughs> well that's an unadventure um, anyway this is kind of a uh, very handy to do this kind of work uh, even because of the vertical stabilizer so it helps you a bit you can take this idea or make a better one if you want to uh, on this I advise you to get some visual references because the instructions as I said are not very clear complete now let's prime this uh, kit with Tamiya spray can uh, each time I have a spray can I told you before I use it so I use a can each time I can <laughs> so let's proceed to the painting of this kit and here it is on the same table rotating I guess I have this cliche with me I don't know and now a little bit of um, pre shading um, the image is uh, obviously is accelerated because I really want you to see all the process I did a bit of um, black uh, pre shaded on, on, on the black spots on those black spots um, and I wanted to practice a little bit of splinters also um, but I took the time this was a fun build the, f the paint is uh, Tamiya XF1 black matte 5050 with uh, Mr. Surfacer um, Mr. Surfacer leveling thinner uh, Mr. Leveling thinner I guess it's the name it is amazing you can use this and 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 the paints self levels it's fantastic um, and here I am going on the panels on each panel and yeah it's an enjoyable process so let's just uh, forget it tell you that I started with a, a sand brown then used a bit of white you will see on that remaining paint on the cup to fade it to the, the, the base color a bit uh, and I turned out to on the final paint let's say uh, here base paint to have a very light sand brown why I am playing a bit and betting with the wash and the pin wash and all the treatment with oils I'm going to give it that it will make it darker so I am just toning down the paint making it old weathered and at the same time hoping for the better uh, with the weathering that it returns to this uh, brown uh, tone
began to paint this bird according to the pictures I saw, which were North Africa in 1941. The colors I had to use was RLM02, okay, uh, RLM76, which is that blue sky underneath, uh, usually the ME262 or the ME109, you know. Uh, the RLM02 is a, a green, so like that splinter camo green, and a desert yellow color. The desert yellow color you are going to um, see here, that probably you will find it a bit too light. And that has an explanation, okay? Uh, more ahead, with the filters, the oils, the washes, everything will act as a filter and will darken a bit. And in my opinion, just in my humble opinion, and I like it that way, but in my opinion, you tell me if you agree with me, all that work that I did with the paintwork, with, with the weathering and all, um, it made it become at least the approximately right type of brown. traces with the airbrush but then I thought oh sorry but screw this because think with me in the desert this plane was a bit rough it was never cleaned uh, maintenance yes but clean no so the splinter the, the those traces are in some cases barely seen because of the the dust and, 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 and the dirt. So what I did was, I did some with the airbrush, yes, but others just faded with the brush. 
And why fade it? Because they are seen a bit more here than there on the plane according to the type of dirt that they have. One, one part may be exposed to the winds and to the, the, the environment and it's more dusty and therefore less seen and the other part uh, on that moment is a bit more seen because it's protected and that's what I try to do with the brush. At the same time, I try to maintain continuity of the trace, you know? So, some traces will be um, more seen than the others, but they are there, but the, even the weathering, I, I, I pressed more a bit on the green than in one part than in the other. oils uh, let's have fun with oils let's try to fade this paint a bit um, first of all a wash and I this time didn't had any uh, white spirit or enamel thinners to uh, use it so I had here an old Zippo uh, lighter with the respective uh, <laughs> gas liquid gas for it so I saw other modelers do it and I used it and it works, it really works, it is fantastic. Uh, almost the same price, a bit cheaper, so <laughs> I don't know if, if I'm going to use Zippo um, gas um, liquid in the future, but either way it worked fine. blast with oils I just used them and reused it and used it again and the brown which was faded and light become became the right amount the correct tone of brown in my humble opinion you be the judge of that 
and I really enjoyed this one. Um, this down part really needs a bit more cleaning, but at the same time I weathered it, used even the airbrush to give it that smog, that, that um, exhaust black and brownish um, smoke it wasn't easy because it it is in 170 seconds it's it's not the tamiya 148 this is just an academy kit 170 seconds um the propeller small propeller and at the end just to give it a bit of um realism just some pigments dust pigments because without any kind of uh, of of liquid just pigments just the dust just the powder because the powder simulated the dust the desert dust okay that very annoying dust that everybody complained about so I really really love this one guys if you love this video and I'm sorry for being so big so long uh, please click on subscribe if you want click on that notification bell also if you want to be notified each time I uh, release a video out also if you want consider me helping on patreon I am there my objectives are very clear there I just want to make my hobby a bit more sustainable just to buy some tools occasionally one or other uh, kit well you if you check the page out you will see it's very clear there and I am not going to say yet what I used to say at the end of the videos and you will see why and will understand why. Okay guys, so see you soon. I will see you in a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is all very well, all the video and all this, but I only noticed one thing when I was editing the video at this same stage, right here and went to my table over there to make it better. And that is the machine gun. So, just a minute. Okay, 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 now, now. Sorry, 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 sorry. Now. One last thing, I noticed when I was doing the editing of the video just a few moments ago, the last thing, scenes, these ones rotating, that in my opinion this machine gun doesn't, well, 
doesn't look the best. Uh, doesn't indeed look the best. So this is going to be great or it's going to be awful. So I am doing this just the same. Okay. So let's just fingers crossed and <clears throat> first of all here goes nothing. Oh god. Okay. 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 Now we can't go back. But we have here the barrel. Okay. 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 Now we do need something <coughs> pointy just to done and now we need to measure this and And now we do need, we do have, <coughs> comparing one thing with the other, we do have indeed a gun barrel. Of, of I am improvising this, usually I would do this on a different manner. Here it is, a bit to the right, a bit to the left, and probably much better now, right? Now, a bit of primer, a bit of black or gun metallic, and it's done from this to that. And you know what? <coughs> now it looks much better, right? Even so a bit out of, uh, yeah. Now we can proceed. I won't forget to say it guys after all this I hope you enjoyed this little jam here I had a blast had a lot of fun and keep modeling guys keep modeling always always with a smile and don't forget to change your machine gun barrel <laughs>